All right. Good afternoon. I'm David Fuller. I am one of the librarians at Lone Star College North Harris. And this is uh, a webinar on the APA style of documentation. There are three documentation styles that most Lone Star College North Harris students use. Those are the APA, the MLA, and the Chicago style of documentation. Most English professors require MLA, although some are switching over to APA. Most history professors require uh, Chicago style documentation. Uh, uh, most psychology, communication, speech, uh, anthropology, and nursing professors require the APA style, which is going to be the focus of our attention today. APA stands for American Psychological Association. They produce a style manual that's updated every decade or so to reflect uh, current needs in publishing and documenting sources. <clears throat> Uh, tell me about your experiences with citing sources for research or writing assignments. If you could just go into the chat uh, chat window and uh, type in what your type in your experiences, and uh, Ms. McGettigan will read them out or uh, open up mics as uh, she thinks best. <clears throat> I'll have a look myself. No, no responses yet. No responses. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, uh, I suspect that many students, at least in my experience, they, when I'm teaching ML, uh, teaching APA, they already have some APA. Some, when I'm teaching APA, they already have some MLA experience uh, because generally, when I encounter students in class classroom settings. They've already taken English 1301, possibly even English 1302. And so they have some experience with documentation. Uh, MLA and APA are similar enough that, that it can cause confusion. Uh, so we're going to cover specifically uh, some things that you need to know to cite an APA correctly if you are used to MLA. <clears throat> so uh, a quick documentation story. Uh, I went to library, uh, so my first experience with documentation was probably in the sixth grade. I think that was the first time that I ever needed to provide a, any sort of bibliography. I got an MLA manual in the eighth grade, and in, I used that throughout high school. And in college, I used a Turabian-style manual. Turabian is basically a stripped-down version of Chicago. And uh, then I went to library school. Library school is where you go to learn how to be a librarian. <coughs> it's a graduate program, a master's degree. I went to Kent State University between 1998 and 2001. And uh, one day in class, in I want to say the spring of 1999, one of my reference services class, my professor, Dr. Mary Stansbury, that's a, <coughs> excuse me, that's a picture of Dr. Stansbury. She tossed a rock on my desk and told me to cite it. Uh, we were having a class just on documentation, so. Uh, Dr. Stansbury is spending the whole class on documentation, and uh, because that's what librarians do. We help students cite their sources correctly. And so she tossed a rock on my desk. It's not this rock, it was a different rock. And she told me to cite it. And I had a Turabian style manual, and I was utterly flummoxed. It turns out there is a way to cite a rock or anything else. In fact, that was the point that she was trying to express, that there's a way to cite anything. If you think creatively and you search through the style manual, uh, that's because uh, Dr. Stansbury was a scholar of realia. Uh, realia is a term in library science that means a non-information object which is owned or retained by a, a library, museum, school, or other educational institution. So a rock does not contain information, but if a uh, you, uh, but if, you're, if a library has it, it needs to be classified and documented in some sort of fashion, which is why we call it reality. And there is a way to cite a rock. There was a way to cite it in Turabian. I found a way. 
There's a way to do it in MLA. In fact, it's really easy to do it in, in MLA. Honestly, I'm an MLA person. Uh, that's my preference. That's why I've got MLA for life written across my knuckles. I'm, a, I'm an MLA person. But I care about all my students and all my professors. And as much as I love MLA, if, you, if, if students are doing doc, uh, APA Chicago, I go wherever the student needs them. Uh, but there is a way to cite a rock in APA. And just for this presentation, I got up to date on citing rocks. This is how you cite a rock in APA. Uh, it took a lot of creative thinking and a lot of searching, but there's a way to cite uh, realia in APA. So the whole point of Dr. Stansbury's exercise was to express that there's nothing you cannot cite. And uh, now probably your professors are not going to be throwing rocks at you in class and telling you to cite them. Or maybe I just get, there's several professors in the room right now, maybe I've just given them a terrible idea what they can do the next time they see face to face. Start handing out rocks and tell them to cite it. Here's a way to cite it. <coughs> So there is nothing that cannot be done in documentation. There is no, there's no source so arcane, so bizarre, that you cannot cite it. You just have to think creatively and search through the manual. <coughs> the, APA, uh, style, the, American, the APA style is currently up to the seventh edition. We just got in the seventh edition manuals uh, last calendar year, last, uh, last fall. And we have been adapting to it. We've been preparing materials for it. We don't have all the materials ready for uh, seventh edition, uh, but we are ready to roll out with seventh edition. And uh, we also have materials for the old sixth edition. And I think many professors are still requiring uh, a sixth edition. Whether your instructors want you to use the sixth edition, which was published in 2010, or the seventh edition, which is published last year, we are going to be able to help you with it. So uh, this is the way you cite a rock. Uh, you cite it, I treated it like it was a sculpture, because there's a way to cite a sculpture, an anonymous sculpture, in, a, uh, in, a, uh, uh, in APA. So it's technically correct. Although it seems kind of arcane, it's technically correct, the best kind of correct. All right, so now enough about rocks. I'm babbling on. I do that a lot. I'm trying to get better. No, no more babbling. Focus on the material. In APA, in MLA, in Chicago, all the three doc, major documentation styles that students use, you cite twice. So their structure, their conceptual structure is very similar. You're going to cite twice. You're going to cite in the body of your paper. That's called the in-text citation. So every time you use source of information in the body of your paper, <clears throat> you're going to cite it within your text. And then at the end of the, uh, uh, your paper, you're going to provide a reference list that lists all of the sources that you use. Whether you used a source once or whether you cited it 100 times, you're going to list it in your reference list once. So. There we go. So in-text citation is uh, fairly straightforward in the body of your text when you use someone else's words or someone else's information, whether you're quoting or paraphrasing, you need to provide a citation. Uh, and that's really straightforward. You can just put in parentheses <coughs> uh, the author's last name, comma, year, publication, key, period, and the page number. Uh, often students, it, this is a general rule I, I give to students. If you find yourself asking, do I need to cite this? The answer is always yes. When in doubt, cite. When in doubt, cite. In my 11 years here, I've never encountered a, a professor saying, oh, these students just cite too much. I've never seen that happen. However, I have seen professors say, students are not citing enough. They like cite a couple times in their paper. When in doubt, cite. Put, just put in citation. And if you cite a lot, it spaces out your paper, pads out your paper. So if you're having trouble getting the minimum length, you can just pad out your paper with additional citations. Not that I never did. Not that I ever did that. All right. So don't tell don't tell any professors that I said that. Uh, so anyway, 
uh, when in doubt, cite. Uh, paraphrasing, quoting, put in your citation. In my mouth. Okay, so the fancy word of the day is parenthetical. Parenthetical means something in parentheses. So your in-text citations are going to be in parentheses, in parentheses. So parenthetical citation is a type of in-text citation. <coughs> uh, so you can uh, learn that word today. You can drop it on, uh, on your friends, just casually drop it in conversation, and you can impress and or annoy them with your fancy word of the day. All right, so in-text citations. Uh, I've got an example here of one particular source of information cited in the three different styles, MLA, APA, and the Chicago style. So you can see the differences between these three major styles. I think most students have, uh, they start out with MLA, and that's really straightforward in parentheses. You just put the author's last name, a space, <clears throat> and the page number. In APA, you also need to put in these commas and the year publication. And there's a reason for that. I can, well, yeah, I mean, we've got time. I might as well go into that. The reason why APA requires a year of publication and MLA does not is that MLA was created for the humanities and APA was created for the social sciences. In the social sciences, the currency of a publication is very important. In the humanities, not so much. So that is one reason why there's a difference. Notice there are commas here. Notice there's a, lo notice there's a lowercase t, and there's a period, and there's no space in between here, in between the, the period and the number. All those little details matter. All those details matter. Uh, very often when I'm checking student work, I'll see they leave off the commas, or they make this an uppercase P. <clears throat> every detail, every single detail in a documentation style matters. So if, if the model you are working from, you put a period somewhere, you put a period there. It puts a comma there, you put a comma there. If it's italicized, you italicize it. If it's lowercase, you lowercase it. All these little rules matter. None of them are, are up for grabs. Uh, so follow all those little details. This is a detail-oriented task. Okay, so in-text citation. Uh, uh, I'm using as an example, or guinea pig, our own uh, uh, Katie McGittigan, our, our host for the day, assuming that she wrote last year a book on uh, furniture restoration, which she is doing right now. Uh, uh, Katie, is an, uh, Katie, Katie can build or fix anything. She's definitely on my zombie apocalypse squad, uh, if I can get her onto, this, onto the team, because she can build or make, uh, fix anything, including old furniture. So I imagine that she wrote a book about restoring furniture. Uh, let's say you're writing, a, you are citing this hypothetical book as a source. You, what you, one option that you have is to introduce the author by name, and then at the end of your, end of your, your narrative, you put in parentheses the year of publication comma and the page number. You also have as an option just putting the whole parenthetical citation at the end. So you can introduce the author by name or you can uh, put the author's name in the parenthetical citation. Either approach is correct. Okay, so uh, there are ways of citing multiple authors. Uh, for example, let's say two authors here, Hoya and Puller wrote a book together that you just put an ampersand in between the two of them. Just put an ampersand. <clears throat> uh, some, some scientific papers can have 20 or 30 or more authors. Uh, when, when it gets too long, uh, you just, for three or more authors, you just put one of the authors, the first listed author, and then you put et al, which means it stands for et alti, which is Latin for and others. So this basically says Martin and others. And, and uh, we have details about different types of in-text citations. These are just the most common types of parenthetical citations that you'll need. Your reference list, again, you're citing at the beginning of your paper and you're citing at the end of your paper. Uh, and you're going to, you're, you've got a page at the very end where you write reference list, the references in bold print, and you list all your sources in alphabetical order. 
<coughs> we're just going to list them all here. Whether you used an author once, whether you cited that person a dozen times, you're going to list it all here. You're going to list it here just once in alphabetical order. So the idea is that someone who's reading your paper wants to know where you've got the information, got a piece of information. They can look at your in-text reference, then flip back to your reference list and get a complete citation. And they can actually track down your source of information and read it. They can read more. Uh, there are a lot of little, de this is the hard part of citation. MLA, APA, or Chicago, this is the hard part. This is, this is, this is the struggle. It is figuring out what goes on on your reference list. There are a lot of details here, and everything has to be done in a particular way, and we have guides about how to do, how to cite these different types of sources for your reference list. <clears throat> We're coming up with an updated uh, uh, handout, and the vast majority of it is just these different types of reference list citations. I hear typing, so I'm going to pause. No? Okay. Right. You're good. You're done. Okay. As you, as you have questions, uh, speak up. Uh, uh, Katie will interrupt me, uh, which I welcome. And uh, it, I'll has, uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me. So uh, certain words or certain elements of the citation are in lowercase, some are in italics, some are in regular text. You've got parentheses in certain locations. You've got periods in certain locations. You don't have periods in other locations. <clears throat> All these little details matter. Uh, when you are in college and you're studying a documentation style, it may feel kind of frustrating because if you are not going to graduate school after college, then the chances that you will be using MLA, APA, Chicago style are not, not that high. But what you are doing, but you're not wasting your time learning a documentation style. But what you, because what you are doing is training your mind to read and follow detailed instructions. That's what a documentation style is. It's a it's a, a list of detailed instructions. So the time that you spend getting every detail right in your uh, in your references, you are training your mind to be a be more effective in the workforce. Because I, I can't think of a single job in which it isn't important to be able to read and follow detailed instructions. All right, now this is a rule that is very important and you will probably want to write it down. But I'm just gonna give you a, a minute so you can be prepared to write this down. You're gonna need to know this, especially if, like me, you're an MLA person and you're adapting to an APA world, this is going to be really important. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, everyone ready? All right, here's the rule. You never provide an author's first or middle name. Even if you know the author's full name, when you list the author, when you just list the author in either the body of your paper or in your reference list, you just provide the last name and the initials for the first or middle name. Never provide the author's first or middle name, <coughs> just initials. So here's an example from our sample paper. Uh, now, we know who this is. We all know who this is, but, it, it, but it's not clear who this is. Who, M. W. Foxes, L. A. Johnson, S. Lesseur. We don't know who these are, so we just have the author's last name and then the initials. Why do you think APA has this rule? Write it out in the chat window. That's hey, interesting hey. for safety reasons. Now that's okay. interesting. 
could you act uh, Katie, could you activate Betsy's mic? So Hello. Hey, Betsy. So elaborate yeah. on your point of view. Um, I mean, like, um, you know how people don't want, like, all their information? Like, because once you have someone's information, it's kind of like, um, well, I just know, like, some people are picky about, like, sending out their name and stuff because it's for, like, right. personal reasons, I guess. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Patsy. No problem. Any other any other points of view? Okay. We have Annette who says that so they won't know the sex of the author. Bingo. That is exactly correct, Annette. That is why ACA has this rule. It is to be is to remove gender bias from the reader. The reader is not going to say, oh. That's a woman. I can't trust a woman on this subject. Women don't know anything about this. Or same thing about men. It removes gender bias from the reader. That is why, that's exactly correct, and that, that is why APA has this rule. So we're going to provide just the author's last name, comma, and the initials. And unless you're famous, it's, I mean, if you were citing William Shakespeare and you write out Shakespeare, comma, W, everyone, we, we know who that is. But for most, but most people don't have that level of thing. You just provide the author's last name, comma, and the initials, the periods in between. All right, so let's go into the uh, details of of uh, formatting your paper. In APA, you have a, a title page. MLA, you don't. APA in Chicago, you have a title page. <coughs> Excuse me. Your title page, right in the middle, should have your title in bold, your name, so our author's name is Polly Wanna Smith, and then information about the course or the academic program that you are in, and followed by a date. Uh, your paper, your entire paper should, should be double spaced. Everything should be double spaced. Make sure your entire paper is double spaced. Uh, I've seen too many single spaced papers or triple spaced papers. Uh, and the second page, you just go straight into the body of your paper. You do have page numbers. In the upper right corner, you're going to have page numbers. Not on the first page, but you do have it on every page after the first one. And there's a way to set that up in Microsoft Word. OK. Uh, any questions before we move on to the citation guide that we have at the library? Questions, comments, gripes, complaints, observations? Thank you. Okay, so uh, Ms. McGettigan is going to paste into the chat bar a link to the research guide <clears throat> that we have created for uh, uh, APA 6th edition. All right, so this is a picture of the cover of the 6th uh, <clears throat> edition to the APA manual. We also have a couple copies of the 7th edition available at the reference desk if you want to look at them. If you are going to go into a graduate program in psychology, you need to get your own or any of the social sciences. Uh, would the professors among us agree that if they're going into graduate school uh, for the social sciences, they need an APA? So maybe speak now. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, you're welcome to just look at ours. We also have a video that explain. You can think of the video as a condensed version of this presentation. Uh, in fact, you can hear my voice in it, and uh, it just summarizes the APA style. We also have a link to Purdue OWL. <coughs> uh, Purdue University has for um, more than two decades, since I was in college in the 90s, maintained an online writing lab. That's what OWL stands for. And uh, the Purdue OWL is just an amazing website that uh, describes how to cite your sources in different documentation styles. 
so I refer to it. Uh, I, I refer to it often. Occasionally, it does make some mistakes, but it also it, it's it's nearly authoritative in terms of uh, the accuracy of the citation. Uh, we also have uh, over here on the left side. You can navigate. You can go to our page on in-text citations. How to to write in-text citations for different types of sources, different types of authors, and how to write citations for different types of sources for your reference list, journal articles. Again, all these little details matter, and there are a lot of details in any sort of documentation style, but especially in APA. For example, this, uh, this volume number is italicized. The issue number is not, the volume issue is. There are a lot of little details here, and we can help you with all those, all those little details. We also have a sample paper. Uh, we have uh, an, uh, I think a ready to publish sample paper for APA 7, we just haven't quite put it up yet. Uh, so we have a sample paper that you can follow. Setting up the formatting in Microsoft in Microsoft Word can be a pain. It can be a real pain to get the formatting set up. So the good news is that we have over here on the left side a template. This APA Word template is a blank Word document with all the APA formatting already set up for you. So if I was a student right now, what I would do is before starting to write my paper, I would download that template, save it under a new file name, and start writing. Any questions about our uh, research guide, our citation guide right here? Okay, so the single most important thing I want you to learn from this webinar is if you need help, please, 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 please ask, because we the librarians are here to help you succeed in college. <coughs> this is my question. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, we have a request to talk about capitalization. Okay. So, titles, journal, and book titles. All right, so I will have to. I have to check check before every APA class. So I want to make sure I want to get this right. Okay, so <clears throat> let me prepare for a moment to make sure I get this all out correctly. In APA, you will capitalize the first <clears throat> the first letter of the first word and the first letter of a proper noun and the first letter of a first word after a colon or a semicolon in a title, a book or periodical title. So let me repeat that. For a book or periodical title, you capitalize the first letter of the first word the first letter of a proper noun <clears throat> or the first letter of the first word after a, uh, after a colon or semicolon. So, for example, looking at here, the New Encyclopedia Britannica, you've got the T and Z capitalized. You've got the B in Britannica capitalized because that's a proper noun, nothing else. We go over to this one. Uh, here, Lesur. Notice that S and super is capitalized because it's after a colon. B in Boss and B in Brown are capitalized because it's a proper noun. EDS is, is capitalized as it's an acronym. Otherwise, nothing else is capitalized. Does that answer your question? It's a very good question. I'm always terrified with, uh, when I'm saying that with a senior APA teaching instructor in the same room with me. 
but I verified this with the speech professors that that is what is that's that's the right way of doing APA. Uh, but uh, uh, Janice, if you want to slap me around because I've done that wrong, please take please do so right now. No, you are exactly right. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right, so this is my email address. <clears throat> uh, I want to emphasize that the librarians are here to help you. If you want help, please contact us. One of our primary jobs, in addition to helping you find information, is to help you cite your sources correctly. So if you want to email me your paper and, and before you turn it in and ask me to check your sources, I'll be glad to do that. I'll be glad to check your citation. Now, if you send it to me an hour before it's due, I may not be able to get to it. Uh, I won't check your writing. I will refer you to the writing center tutors for that. But I will not check your writing, but I will check your formatting, and I'll check your documentation. So uh, there's no reason to ever get a, a mistake in, in documentation, because the librarians will check that for you. And we have different ways of checking. Uh, so just because the library is physically closed right now, but we're on duty. The librarians are on duty. Katie is posting in the chat window a link to our virtual reference service. And what that does, there are different ways of, of getting help. You can email us. You can be in a chat window with us. Uh, our latest service, it's really neat. You can set up a WebEx appointment with us. And uh, a librarian can help you in real time. So you, you there's a, and you, if you look at the link that uh, Katie provided, there it'll show you uh, how to make an appointment, and you can make an appointment with a librarian who will meet you in a WebEx meeting and help you in real time. I did that for the first time last night. It was pretty cool, uh, and we'll be glad to do that. Please don't hesitate to ask for help. Any questions? <clears throat> All right, what are you going to do if you do have questions? Oh, you love the pixel art. Yes, yes, that was by uh, uh, Katie and Megan Hopwood and Billy Hoya. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. <clears throat> we are we are switching to making virtually, and uh, Megan's video is a prize jewel on that. If you have more ideas like that, and if it's something you'd like for us to to help you with, it, just uh, let us know. We'll see what we can work out. Okay. Uh, any final questions? DOI. DOI. DOI stands for here and find an example. Of this. Gotta have an example. I need to go find. I tell you what, I am going to find an example. I'm gonna find an example to share with you. One of your references had one in it. Oh, it did. All right. Yeah, that uh, on one of the screens. One. Have one there. Let's have one there. <coughs> no, I, I think I need to go to Purdue Owl. All right, so here's an example. Am I still sharing, Katie? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Awesome. So this is an example example from Purdue Owl. <coughs> uh, uh, a DOI, DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier, and it is a unique serial number 
attached to an individual publication. Uh, if you if your publication has a DOI, use it. If your publication does not have a DOI, then don't worry about it. Any other questions? Is that, I'm, I'm going to admit, I don't deal with DOI publications that much. Is that a correct description of how our professors would like DOIs addressed by students? The, the problem students often have is when to use it. What I tell them is if you found it electronically and there's a DOI, you need to use it. Right. This actually looks like a hyperlink, and I don't think that's correct. It is the new style for seventh is hyperlink. Oh, we do, we okay. do provide, okay, we provide hyperlinks. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, Katie is going to push out a Kahoot that she developed for, wait, time to Yeah, Katie's uh, pushing out a link to a Kahoot which she developed to uh, give you some time to practice APA citation. So why don't you use that, share it off, uh, work with it offline. Uh, Katie, is there an expiration date on that Kahoot? Uh, right now it expires on Friday, but we can extend it if we need to. Okay. So if your professors would like for uh, you to cite it in some capacity, maybe you should take a screenshot uh, at the end, uh, that's entirely up to your individual professors. Any qu closing questions or comments, especially from our faculty who are present? All right, thank you for your time. Uh, really appreciate you coming. Uh, we are recording this uh, this presentation, and we can make an edited version available, cutting out some of the excess at the beginning. You want a copy of that? Just let me know. Thanks for coming, folks. <laughs>